Hi, and welcome to the Modern Utility E-Commerce Series. My name is Mark Wilkinson at IBEX, and uh, today we're going to talk about EV charging station programs for utilities. This is a topic that gets a lot of attention at conferences, and we know that utilities are speaking in their boardrooms about their plans for the next 12 to 20 years. And uh, we think the, the opportunities are, are pretty amazing for utilities, especially around new revenue and um, and customer engagement uh, related to EV charging stations. Uh, the infrastructure conversation, the topic around infrastructure is best left to engineers. Uh, our perspective is a little bit more focused on ways of reaching out to customers and building ongoing dialogues and improving the relationship, as well as working with um, new revenue programs and enhancing the products and services that utilities can offer their customers. And so we have a few ideas about uh, the way that charging station programs can fit into the utility markets for the next, uh, for the next cycle. Um, and so thank you for joining us and we'll jump right in. Um, most of the conversations that we discuss with our clients and that we hear about today start in the world of residential charging station lease and install, um, where basically the utility wants to make available the opportunity to have a licensed technician from the utility install the device and um, the customers can actually lease the EV charging station from their home right on their bill. And it's absolutely makes sense. Um, it's, a, it's a topic that really just taps into that incredible consumer interest. Um, EVs are, are great um, attention getters for the late stage millennials, I'm sorry, late stage uh, Gen Xers who started the adoption in the, er, in the earliest days of the Nissan Leaf and, and the, um, the pre-Tesla Roadster um, and have uh, continued to ramp up. But more importantly, the next two generations coming behind them, big, much bigger cohorts are really important uh, to the future of electric vehicles, um, not only in the consumer world, but also you know, electrification of the, of the full transportation industry. So great demographics uh, for millennials and, and Gen Z's behind. They'll be uh, the future home buyers. And this is the generation that's gonna take us for the next 25 to 50 years from the utilities perspective. So getting involved with EVs and charging stations in the home makes a lot of sense. Um, promotes electrification, uh, especially for programs where there is a time of use rate that privileges EVs, you know, it encourages off peak use and um, can be tremendously both green and energy efficient, but not also save money for those consumers. So we think it's a great program, uh, but uh, timing, like everything in business, timing is everything. And a lot of the conversations that we've heard about um, and participated in where we usually get called is to understand the business cases for uh, charging stations in the home. And that's where the details get a little less rosy or a little less robust. And so we thought we would bring up a couple of interesting facts just to arm our you know, friends and partners in the utility space about um, some of the emerging realities. Um, for example, Tesla currently commands more than 80% of the US market for EVs. Um, it's about 42 to 47% globally um, because other manufacturers around the world have had more success penetrating their local markets with EVs. But in the United States, in North America generally, but particularly in the United States, Tesla really is delivering more, more cars than anyone else. In fact, um, the 2019-2020 data suggests that at about 60 to 63,000 units already delivered, the Model 3 um, from Tesla actually is bigger than all of the other EVs currently available in the US combined. Um, and, and so this gets to that topic of total addressable market. If Tesla is such an overwhelming um, you know, mega, uh, mega dealer in this space, and they generally include the charging equipment with the vehicle sale or lease, those new Tesla owners really aren't part of the addressable market for utilities to you know, sell or lease a charging station. Because again, that's, it's part of Tesla's pitch to, they have proprietary equipment, they've got proprietary charging connections, and, and they want to go ahead and be part of the sale of that equipment. Um, but the, the good news is that as the future unfolds by 2024, there should be more than 50 vehicles in the US market, 50 different vehicles from various brands in the US market. Um, but the flip side or the downside of that for utilities looking to do installation and EV charging station leases is that the automotive brands by and large are very good at doing sales um, and they're very good, uh, even better at doing sales of attachment products like financing or the charging stations or service contracts. And so maintenance plans and all of those programs get wrapped into the vehicle sales. 
And what that really means is that um, of, the, of the market of addressable consumers taking home their, their electric vehicle from the dealer um, for a new vehicle purchase, it's very unlikely that you're going to find too many customers who haven't been pitched or had an opportunity to um, buy those charging stations from the manufacturer um, or from the brand themselves. And so what that means for utilities considering this, um, this type of a program is that you've got to find a way to get ahead of that curve. In other words, the utility in order to be successful at doing um, EV charging station leasing on the bill needs to let customers know before they're considering that EV purchase um, that the option to get a charging station can be rolled into their bill and finance effectively through the utility. Um, so it's very important for, for utilities to have that kind of information available. And we'll talk a little bit more about the customer engagement and information opportunity in just a few minutes. A couple of other things. The market for electric vehicles is not evenly distributed around the, the United States. Um, the research suggests that in just seven states, um, outside of the seven states that dominate EV penetration, you're looking at very low levels of EVs in market in most states, um, sometimes as low as one or 2% of all vehicles registered in, the, in those states. Um, and so that means that outside of the coastal cities um, seven states on the east and west coast, Arizona and Texas, um, there's a fairly limited market for electric vehicles. In other words, you, the total addressable market to an east or a west coast utility, a Texas utility, an Arizona utility might be seven, eight, ten percent of their market. Um, but in states outside of that region, you might only have two or three percent, maybe just one or two percent of all vehicles registered actually um, be electric vehicles. So these are important stats to look at when you're, you know, forming your business plan about potentially doing charging stations. Um, and we actually have done a couple of these with our utility partners. Um, in fact, in one case with a Midwest utility with a four um, state footprint, uh, it turned out that if they were able to get effectively a 15% market share of the total addressable market for vehicles that weren't Teslas, um, or you know, be able to get into the market for people buying used Teslas or used electric vehicles and wanting that charging station, um, the, the opportunity annually was only about $150,000, $175,000 of gross new revenue, which on the surface sounded okay, um, but then when we started to take a look at what the costs are to support that, to buy the, cap, you know, buy the equipment, put it on the lease, manage that capital reserve, deal with all of the customer service issues and um, get their teams trained on these new devices and deal with the equipment upgrades or adjustments and the changes of, of equipment when, when and if people were dealing with uh, vehicle changes, it turned into something that was right away an, a negative um, from a business and financial standpoint. Um, so the reality is that today, right now, um, the market, the, the addressable market for electric vehicle charging stations as, a, as something to put on the lease really only makes sense to utilities on the East or West Coast and in Texas and Arizona. Um, but the changes are taking place very rapidly um, that over the next five to 10 years, that marketplace is going to change. So we certainly are going to continue to evaluate this for our partners. And if you have questions, be sure to get in touch with us. I have a couple of sample models that might be helpful if you're interested in, in pursuing these types of programs. Um, but again, we think that this is a, a huge opportunity specifically around customer engagement, even if your market is not quite ready. Um, there's, a, there's a growing need um, and, and a growing opportunity to get involved with charging stations. In fact, even workplaces, employers are increasingly looking at this in places outside of even those coastal cities in Silicon Valley, for example, um, are considering workplace charging as a major perk, as an attraction for those millennials and those Gen Z employees who are most commonly going to be driving these vehicles. So um, hang on to those ideas. It's, it's a good program, but in most cases, not quite ready for prime time. Um, but the movement of the electrification of the, at least the residential vehicle fleet is certainly uh, going to make that more attractive to most utilities over the next 10 to 15 years. 
Um, but on the topic of charging stations and infrastructure partnerships, we really do think that the, the angle is to, is to develop um, customer engagement opportunities to build the, and amplify the value that the utility brings to its customers through charging station programs. And the great news is that there's plenty of infrastructure and public and private partnerships available too. Um, and the premise here is just expanding EV viability through development of charging station infrastructure and networks of charging stations, uh, either directly, which the utility is, uh, you know, utilities around the country are already doing, or through partners. Um, in fact, there's a great article in the October 19th edition of the Wall Street Journal in Section B, a really long article actually about the role that utilities play um, and the war that they wage in the charging station network battle. And we think, um, especially for um, the world of the big infrastructure um, questions, you know, those are very obvious details. Utilities are going to play a massive role. Um, but at the actual charging station level and in the way of being able to connect um, to their customers, we think there's a tremendous opportunity. Um, and it actually has a revenue play. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of venues here for, for revenue opportunities. Um, first of all, the key to adoption for electric vehicles is not just that generational shift, but um, you know, really being able to make sure that there are networks available because um, outside of urban centers where the daily commute, you know, where most of these vehicles are being used, um, you know, with a, a, a relatively brief commute, or if you're lucky enough to have um, workplace charging, uh, you really need to be able to get access to a charging network. Um, and so there's a big uh, investment here, and there's a great way for utilities to get fully branded in states where it's uh, it's allowed and where the regulators are, are going to be uh, enthusiastic about showing that that connection. Um, you know, and we think that the more network growth we have in the suburbs, as especially as millennials, late stage, uh, early stage rather, millennials are shifting from urban to suburban as they start families and um, and move with their electric vehicles into the suburbs, that daily commute gets a little bit challenging. So the charging networks, both at home and um, and in their communities will become a big part of the, the ease of adopting um, the, the, the um, vehicles themselves. And it's interesting because even marquee brands like Porsche and Tesla are investing heavily. So at the very high end of the market, Tesla and Porsche are starting to make private investments in, in network infrastructure. Um, you know, Tesla wants to build a network across the country, but with fewer than 100,000 charging stations currently available, um, that network has to grow by five or 10 times in order for uh, it, the electric vehicle proliferation to get very common. And this is where utilities can have a tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, imagine that you're able to promote to your customers that they can sign up with a subscription or um, be able to get uh, the, a charging station map or something like that to their smartphone and know exactly where the charging stations are that are connected to the utility network, um, even go so far as to have their bill paid, you know, their charging time at a remote location charged back to their electric bill. Um, we also know that there are a number of um, there, there's a great deal of information that customers need in order to understand how to use these devices effectively, the savings, um, the money savings that they get from these programs. Uh, just a tremendous amount of opportunity for the utility to really promote electric vehicles and electrification of the vehicle fleet, as well as where the charging stations are, how to use them, how to record. The, you know, if I have a smartphone app that works with my electric utilities charging station, I'm much more likely to be using that app on a regular basis. And those are the electric, you know, the digitally engaged customers, those digital natives that are going to be, um, you know, connecting with the utility on a regular basis most likely to log into the portal, most likely to understand their energy efficiency, most likely to take advantage of other programs that the utility may offer. Um, and so for, for that cohort of customers that typically doesn't engage telephonically and through their bills, um, the EV station may be, a charging station for EVs may be a great way for utilities to connect more effectively with their customers. And um, something that's happening more innovatively, more, more, um, uh, more of a new development in the industry is the way for these charging stations to be used for advertising and membership programs so that you get an account at a charging network or you um, or the utility can participate in advertising share 
um, because these devices are increasingly being, you know, charging stations in public areas are increasingly being delivered with um, very large TV screens um, and touch screens with um, customer accounts and or key fobs that tag a customer's account for payment, um, that there's advertising being promoted to customers, especially for the quick charge stations. And so customers who are you know, regularly using these devices are gonna be exposed to these types of advertising and promotions. And the best part for utilities is often the charging, the I'm sorry, the advertising revenue associated with advertising at the charging station is more than enough to cover the cost of equipment and very quickly can turn into an interesting revenue opportunity. Um, especially if, you know, the utility is able to, you know, get paid basically as an advertising share and for the electricity. This is a great incremental revenue opportunity for utilities. And again, more and more, the customers who are going to be using these are going to be wanting to be able to track their, uh, track their electric use and their time on, on the battery for the health of their vehicle. It's a great opportunity to have a membership program um, or to tie directly back to the utility, the customer's utility account if it's uh, within the network. Um, so uh, charging stations really do represent a terrific opportunity. Here's the, this is, you know, as opposed to the, the leasing of charging station direct to consumer, we think um, immediately uh, over, especially over the next five to 10 years until the vehicles proliferate more, um, more directly. And, um, and in the time that utilities can inform their customers that they have the leasing options available, the more direct revenue opportunity is through these advertising and membership programs, um, in addition to some of the public and private partnerships that are available. And the best part for, especially around advertising is utilities likely don't have to add um, much in the way of um, uh, new infrastructure from an operational perspective, because these are devices that are connected to giant ad networks and those advertisements are, are done through third parties anyway. Um, so there's no reason for advertising sales or advertising syndication to become a core competency of the electric utility. It's more that the devices that they are selecting for charging station networks be ad equipped um, and the rest of that market flows through very nicely. It's a pretty mature market now. Um, so tremendous opportunity there. And then finally, the, the topic that we think is really the, the most um, um, investable in, in all of this is uh, that, that journey from electrification for customer engagement. That the, the EV is a trigger point for the future customers, uh, you know, for utilities to get to know those customers very well. The um, customer engagement opportunities abound. They're really pretty pronounced with electric vehicles. These are folks who are um, buying a vehicle for a variety more reasons than just um, for, for basic transportation. The choice of an electric vehicle tells us a lot about the segments and the, um, the buying intent that they might have in the future. Um, and it creates an opportunity for customer engagement like very few other in the market. And this is true, the brands that are promoting these vehicles themselves know it um, and the utilities can also take advantage. And the premise here really is just by um, engaging and informing customers about EVs, the, the utility can promote market share, but also promote the, um, the electrification of the grid, promote direct customer engagement, build those digital connections more effectively over time. Um, and again, we think that this mines that strong consumer interest um, and then there's obvious CSAT and PL benefits to, to broader electrification of the transportation fleet. In fact, there's plenty of research that suggests it is the future of, of the big electric utilities in the US. Um, one of the biggest gaps for electrification beyond uh, the electrification of the vehicle fleet beyond the charging stations is just the absence of a resource that consumers can go to for unbiased, credible advice on or recommendations for electric vehicles. Um, you know, th there's always consumer reports, but that's a paid service and not everybody subscribes to it. Um, and, uh, and there's obviously marketing and advertising in market, but, you know, that comes with its own bias. The, you know, most of the consumer base makes judgments about electric vehicles with imperfect information. Um, but utilities have an incredible benefit here in terms of being a credible and trusted resource for information related to anything related to electrification. Um, and so really, if, if we can leverage the, the web assets that utilities have and they're credible and, and highly visited, um, utilities can make a, an enormous breakthrough and we think in customer engagement related to vehicle fleets. So imagine if your website had a section that includes reviews about electric vehicles, unbiased, uh, you know, not, not market influenced reviews, just 
you know, you can aggregate this data, you can subscribe or syndicate this data, you could do testing, you can partner with consumer reports and others to bring, you know, unbiased reviews to the marketplace. And you can source or crowdsource that data from actual customers and create really compelling um, value add content on your website that will attract more uh, and more of your customers for insights into electric vehicles. Um, but, uh, you know, just informing your customer versus actually giving them something to do, activating that interest is really where engagement takes place. So imagine if that customer can go to a review, they can maybe compare different models within a brand or compare different brands. Um, there might be savings calculators or battery life reports um, and, and calculators to help me make a good decision about a, a vehicle. But then the consumer can actually perhaps click a link to get a, a view of all the dealers of that vehicle in market or um, a, click a link to even schedule an appointment for a test drive of one of these vehicles. That's that shift from inform, uh, informing a customer base to engaging a customer base and actually activating a customer base and engaged and activated customers taking steps towards realizing the benefits. That's where the CSAT benefits really obtain for utilities. You know, there's Uplights had some interesting research over the last couple of years showing that customers, most customers are aware that they have um, access or that, that they have rebates available for different for different energy efficiency programs or EV programs, um, but they don't necessarily take advantage of them or or take action. And so a, a content program, both on the website and through email, would be a great way for utilities to bring customers into their environment, into that trusted ecosystem, and actually help them take action towards saving money or being more energy efficient or you know, adopting an electric vehicle. Um, and then we talked about, in terms of charging stations in particular, um, imagine if on my smartphone app or a mobile page of the website for a utility, um, a customer could get maps to EV charging stations or have their account um, and, and membership in a charging network activated. These are great ways to promote customer active customer engagement to solve some of their problems in a way that now with technology becomes very easy for utilities to do. This is a terrific mechanism to build that lasting connection, a digital connection with that customer. Um, and, and it's a customer base that over the next 25 years is going to dominate the automotive ecosystem. Um, and so getting them activated, connected to our networks is, is really valuable for us. And then, um, and then finally, there are obvious benefits, and we've talked a little bit about them already. And this is a there's there's plenty of research in this regard, um, but electrification and off-peak use benefits, especially where utilities have time of use rates that have a privileged charging rate for electric vehicles, um, promotes activation, promotes customer membership, promotes promotes enrollment in in other types of programs. These are programs. Um, customers are going to notice that they're saving money by charging off peak and, and maybe that will activate their interest in demand response programs or other forms of energy efficiency in the home. Um, and then obviously uh, the P&L health from not just um, off peak use and, and spreading out the load across the entire portfolio uh, of, of generation assets, that's just good business at, at a, um, at a P&L basis, but to actually promote electrification of the vehicle fleet um, so that it's demonstrable. In other words, utilities who are doing these kinds of programs who are connected to their customers can start to measure that activity. People coming to the website, clicking on a dealer link and maybe scheduling an appointment can tie directly to the purchase of you know, trackable assets around the purchase of electric vehicles. That'll give the utility great insight into the future of electric vehicles in their markets. Um, and that, that value, that data is gonna have real value in terms of not just um, the p and but decision-making and promoting things that are working versus some other resources that might not be working. Duke's got a great program that's, uh, that's gonna be kicking off now where they're gonna get, uh, I think 400 customers are gonna have their EV uh, charging stations uh, installed in the home in South Carolina market, I guess, where uh, Duke is going to have a tremendous amount of insight into how customers are using their electric vehicles. And, um, and, and that data is going to come back to really give them a roadmap and inform their roadmap for, for future improvements. Um, so again, we think um, that the customer engagement aspect of EVs, specifically around charging stations, both in the network and at home, is going to be a tremendous opportunity for utilities who are leaning in on this topic um, and, and plenty of resources available to, to utilities who are considering these types of programs. And we put a few of them together here. 
So for example, um, and if you're, uh, if you're considering business cases, please get in touch. We have a couple that we can share with you, but there's a, a bit of data on electric vehicle sales in the United States. Um, a, a short list, this is not exhaustive, but a few articles and a couple of um, links to charging station partners, both direct membership programs and then advertiser supported programs if you have um, use for those resources. And then a couple of important white papers uh, published reasonably uh, recently to inform partners and, uh, and utilities about some of the programs that are ongoing in the United States. Um, so if you have questions, uh, we certainly would appreciate an opportunity to speak more directly with you, but thank you for joining us today and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Be sure to subscribe to Wave Zero to get uh, a, a, a content update on all of our podcasts and join us next time when we talk about uh, e-commerce platforms for utilities and the technology choices that utilities should consider in, uh, in moving into new revenue sources and e-commerce programs for their customers. Thank you very much.